I don't remember my life in Somalia, but you know, when I was two years old, I was born in 1988, when I was about two years old, civil war happened in Somalia, and that my family fled from Somalia to refugee camps in Kenya. So that's where I spent most of my life in the refugee camps in Kenya. The refugee camps are a harsh place to live in, you know, hot days, cold nights. Um, if you're lucky, you get to eat once a day. Um, it's basic survival every day. Well, my father came to America through sponsorship through one of his family members. So that's, he came here in 1998 and then he sponsored us. I was 16 years old and I was first resettled in New York and then my dad moved us from there for after two days and we moved straight to Wilmington, Minnesota. And I've been here since 2004. I was registered at school right away so I had to go to school. It was a big culture shock right away because everybody spoke different than me, everybody looked different than me. And there was uh, about five other Somali kids and they all grew up here at that time. They went to school at the same time so I was one of the first um, recent immigrants to this school, so it was it was very hard for me. Um, very hard to wake up in the morning and go to school because of that. Um, I didn't want to go to school in the mornings. Um, I was 16, don't have a lot of prior prior academic you know background, so kind of had to start from scratch. So that that was very tough. I went to college in 2006. I graduated from St. Cloud State University in 2010. Um, Got a job with Lutheran Social Services. I worked there for about a year with, as an immigration case manager. And got married in 2011, moved to Faribault for another job to work for Genio Turkish so as a supervisor. Came back to Wilmer after, uh, after a year later in 2012, moved to Wilmer with my family, with my, with my wife. Welcome to Happiness and the City. This is Barbara and Today we'll uh, focus our attention on um, perfection of um, action, like you know what I'm trying to do with this little um, uh, uh, kerchief, and the opposite of it, which is vice. Two weeks ago we focused on the basic concept of virtue and you see how complicated it is and down the road and more of the broadcast I will be talking more in depth of many aspects of virtual. Uh, today I wanted to talk about opposite of virtual, vice, because we are in a situation in which almost everything in um, social attitudes is focused on vice. The reason I talked about virtual first so that you understand the multidimensionality of that concept of virtual, how it is connected to uh, different perceptions, valuations in different cultures and different um, traditions and different uh, belief systems. So it is not that easy to um, focus on that. And yet, if we start judging one culture with virtues of another culture without understanding some sort of shared platform, shared connection, then we end up in um, huge social conflicts and wars. So before we make judgments about a different culture or um, motives of a different person's action, we have to have understanding of that concept of virtue because vice, the concept of vice, disconnected from virtual, becomes a form of total destruction of hope. And hope is essential to exist 
in ways that are not destructive despair. Because if everything is vice, there is no hope. So this attitude of criticizing everything and everybody is vice in itself. Because virtue would be search for truth, search for peace, search for understanding, search for compromises. For instance, if there is a very complex social uh, conflict around concepts of politics, and if one group comes in and just condemns any conversation about differences of opinion on a certain topic, that condemnation in itself is opposite of virtue, because virtue would be to sit at a round table uh, and to discuss those very conflicting matters and to come to a, an agreement. Um, that would also be to focus on creation of programs and um, opportunities for people to learn to accept each other's lives without destroying and condemning each other's um, destinies, properties and um, entire joy of life. So I encourage you to read Wikipedia article on vice and of course when you look at the uh, search engines um, content of vice there are many other things connected with this um, particular uh, word but I focus on the meaning of the philosophical uh, word that focuses our attention on the uh, foundation of our evaluations of each other's actions. So in Wikipedia, vice is defined as the opposite of virtue, which is very interesting because um, vice really doesn't exist without the concept of virtue. So what we have today is very strange because vice condemnations became disconnected from the concept of virtue. And that may be the reason that there is so much confusion around this particular um, time period in history. Um, I will go to a different article on this particular concept, but I wanted um, you to understand that the entire social media ignores that reference to the need to create concepts and standards of virtue. When you look at uh, social media and um, traditional media, almost everything is focused on punishment. Punishment, condemnation, um, destruction. And that is very strange because when I was taught how to be a reporter, this was during the time of the conflict between capitalism and socialism. So there was a certain definition of differences of opinion on many matters that allowed people to communicate with each other. And this was actually during Cold War period. So now we have in a situation in which there is no longer conversation between socialism and capitalism as some sort of standards in economics and there is only focus on vice but that vice is disconnected from any standard of virtue. So 
And uh, uh, another way to the to define this is uh, in a different uh, article of Wikipedia that vice is a practice, behavior or habit generally considered immoral, sinful, criminal, rude, taboo, deprived or degrading in the associated society. So we have um, the definition that vice is a form of behavior that a particular society um, rejects. But if that society doesn't have a standard of virtue, then it creates atmosphere of total destruction and annihilation of any communication and any ways in which people can come to agreement. The United States of America was created on ancient concepts of virtue that derive from uh, Greek traditions of uh, political philosophy, from um, Italian heritage, from biblical tradition, and of course from the entire history of um, Israeli uh, kingdoms, um, Byzantine Empire, Roman Empire, and all of those um, traditions created sophisticated knowledge about complexity of human agreement in uh, circumstances of um, complicated life stories, personalities, circumstances of weather, economics, international um, relations. So we have that sophistication of thinking in our heritage. So the virtue in this context would be to create ways in which people can learn about each other and come to agreement by virtue of association. And one of the great places for this are universities, because universities and colleges are not only considered places of learning, but also places to search for virtue. And today we have a situation in which a lot of the conversation about virtue is totally ignored and people only focus on vice and then they come into conflict with each other without any way to create connection in which they can come to understanding of what it is they are really fighting about. Because it's possible that they are fighting only because of the lack of the standard that would allow them to create peace between each other. So focus on understanding vice in the context of virtue is essential to create peace. Because if we only condemn other people for their speech or beliefs, if we remove them, if we close um, them from any way to work their ideas out with those who disagree with them, then we create a situation of vice, vice destroying vice. So there is still no virtue. And then this situation becomes spiral of death, frankly. And this is what we have in many uh, circumstances today. And that is the root of modern terrorism. Modern terrorism is not created by uh, fighting for economic in interest. It's created to fight vice. 
those people use vice to destroy vice. They think that they are doing the right thing, but they are not. The right thing is to create standards of virtue and within that context to create channels of communication. The, the, one of the great organizations that is doing this great virtual um, peaceful oriented activity is Google because they contain every opinion on earth in their search engine so people by learning diverse opinions can create their own thinking and create their own conclusion. That's a, a very powerful peacemaking activity. Otherwise, there would be total isolation and we would have even um, have to deal with more violence than today. So in order for us to create sense of security and safety throughout the world, we have to have places in which people start learning about the concept of virtue and finding ways to pursue concept of virtuous content as we um, are encouraged by the Declaration of Independence to pursue happiness. And that leads me to another point. People think that everybody has the right to um, their forceful way of making somebody else agree with them. I would consider that attitude vice because the right that focuses on destruction is by definition not virtuous. So it is much better to create virtuous circumstances like free universities in which people freely pursue ways to learn to communicate with each other without distraction. So that's virtual. I think that the current generation of people who are um, entering universities has not been really taught how to patiently accept disagreements between each other. When I was growing up in Europe, there was a big conflict between atheism and Judaism and Christianity. And when you really looked at that conflict, you understood that most of the people who proclaimed themselves to be atheists did this only because they were forced to do it by economic circumstances. And that in situations of liberty, they would completely change their mind about um, the faith of their ancestors. And when communism was um, ended, those people came back to their religions, to synagogues, to churches. So we have a situation in which the vice that was blocking people's freedom of their faith created circumstances in which they were forced to lie. They were forced to proclaim something that they didn't believe in. And in a situation that we have today, in which people are forced to accept somebody else's opinion without any form of 
peacemaking activity leads to violence. And this is what created a very dangerous situation in which people, instead of using their uh, focus and energy to create peacemaking activities, they use that energy for violence. As if they never could see the opportunity of something different than violence. So I think that the great social media organizations like Facebook, Twitter, Google, many other wonderful places of um, access to social connection should focus on virtual and search for virtual, that is in the spirit of love. And only after this search is established and people feel safe learning to express their opinions, we'll see what um, can be done with those who would be very uh, violent and destructive. Because today, there is an attack on opinions of people who simply don't have any opportunity to learn otherwise. So they feel trapped and they feel that, um, that there is no um, safe, loving way for them to express their speech. And when you look at a lot of what is happening in social media, we don't have those channels open to create those reconciliations between people. It's all, either you agree to whatever is happening in a given t moment or you are out. So that's a form of violence too, cutting a person out, removing um, blocking something like this has place but only in very extreme circumstances ordinarily we should look for ways to create social peace and peace by definition means harmonious coexistence with diverse people with diverse ways with diverse opinions Peace doesn't mean that you have to force everybody to the same opinion. That is a form of forceful violence. So, if we want to proceed in Europe, in Russia, in America, in China, in Latin America, all over the world, if we want to proceed in ways that would promote peace, we have to come back to the concept of virtue. And we have to understand that that concept is not just one concept that applies to everybody, but it is very diversified and it's connected to um, heritage of many nations, many families, many individuals, and it's not something that can be approached too simplistically. So, I would advise everybody, Congress, the President, all of you who are creating and forming op opinions, to abandon the tool of condemnation. First of all, on a Christian territory, this should be legal because there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. So right at this uh, principle, we shouldn't even use that term. Secondly, the great tradition of universities promoted the idea of university as a sanctuary. And um, throughout the centuries, we learned that it is very important because 
of the need of tranquility during the years people acquire knowledge because one moment you are ignorant of something and maybe two years later you learn the right opinion about it. This is something that is not happening in an instant. Those are not immediate gratifications. Learning in the mind has certain um, processes. It's, um, it's, it can take a long time. It, take, it can take a lot of faith in God's grace to develop. So it's not the same as appetite, in which you are hungry, you eat right away, you are satisfied. The mind functions in a different way than the body. So, to conclude my remarks today, we have to have understanding that the mind is not the same as the body. And because this is something that all people on earth share, we all have minds. It, the recognition of this is already the beginning of finding areas of commonality so that we can develop ways in which God's spirit of love can come to us. And when spirit of love is within us, we don't need punishment, we don't need condemnation because condemnation is about punishment and spirit of God's love is about mercy, joy, comfort and true peace.